Hi, and welcome to Lynx Talk. I'm Hans Carpenter, and I'm joined today by a delegation from Hyperlinx, a new and exciting club on campus. I'm joined by uh, Professor Derek Dadian Smith. He's the faculty advisor for Hyperlinx. And uh, Derek, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Um, I'm uh, assistant professor of communications here at Lindenwood University, Belleville. Um, just uh, decided to get hyperlinks off the ground this semester, and um, I'm the I'm the advisor for that. We're also joined by Kyle Hawk, the president of Hyperlinks. And Kyle, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Yes, sir. I'm an interactive media and web design major here at Lindenwood. Uh, like I said, president of Hyperlinks, and excited to finally get this organization off the ground. We've been talking about it for quite a long time now. And you said this is your first semester with Hyperlinks, and uh, how, have you, how would you characterize the turnout so far? Uh, it's been great um, for an organization that kind of really just started mid-semester. You know, it took us a while to officially become a student organization. There's a lot of uh, process that you have to go through to, to get that status. And um, so, uh, so far it's been um, very good. I think we definitely would like to have even more members, many more members. Um, we just, uh, you know, we're, we're just getting going and I think once, once people see, once students see um, the kind of cool stuff we're doing in the organization that, um, that we'll kind of get more members as we go along here. Well, while we're on the subject of the cool stuff, uh, why don't you, what exactly is Hyperlinks and what do you do? So Hyperlinks, um, I, I kind of came up with this idea of Hyperlinks as a way for students to explore um, things they're interested in beyond the classroom. Um, this is kind of, it goes along with the interactive media web design degree, although it's open to anyone. Um, but um, if anyone is interested in new technology, interactive media, web design, uh, gaming, um, maker culture, all of these kind of cool things that are, um, that are kind of related to each other. Um, it's just a way for students to um, do some of this stuff that hasn't quite made it into the curriculum yet. Um, this is a really quickly changing field and so universities sometimes are slow to change, especially with the, the courses that are actually being offered. And so I see this as kind of a chance for students to get together to kind of be on the forefront of um, new technology and be exploring those things um, before it even actually gets into the curriculum. So it could even become like a testing grounds. You know, something we do in hyperlinks might ultimately become um, a course that's, that's offered for credit. So. Yeah, and expanding on what you're saying, um, we don't have a set plan of events for what we plan to do. We just show up at our meetings and everyone just comes up with any idea. I mean, it could be just something you scanned over the internet and be like, hey, that's pretty cool. Why don't we check that out? And uh, we just, like, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a chance for students to just kind of get together and, and um, bounce ideas off of each other. Right. Um, uh, to uh, <laughs> now, I'm. What do we do again? I forget. No. <laughs> you know, if if student if a student is, for example, a student's interested in in game design, um, you know, they could come and say they could come to a hyperlinks meeting, say, hey, I have an idea for a game, and I don't really have all the know-how, all the skills to do that, but maybe there's other people in the group that can also contribute. So if there's somebody that's really good at like graphic design and you know really proficient with Adobe Suite and all that, um, that can do the design elements of the game and maybe somebody's really good at programming and they, um, they actually write the code and somebody else might be really interested in interaction design and they kind of design like the mechanics of the game and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's really completely open to what students want to do with it and um, what students are interested in. Um, 
our current project that we're our big project that we're working on right now is um, this was decided on by by the students um, was that they decided they want to build a 3D printer. Um, so 3D printing is kind of a becoming a more and more of a of a big thing now. Um, consumer level 3D printers these days cost around three thousand dollars is is kind of the entry level price point. Um, and um, we decided instead of spending three thousand dollars, we can actually. Um, use open source designs to build our own 3D printer for Kyle found a kit that's what like 300 yes sir 350 dollars so for 350 dollars you can get the parts that you need you can actually if you have access to a 3D printer uh, that somebody else has you can get them to print some of the parts for you um, so uh, along the way we're going to be learning stuff about you know, it, you know, it's going to involve some circuitry, or circuitry and electronics and just putting stuff together and, and mechanics and stuff like that. Stuff that I'm not really, you know, I, I'm not an expert in by any means. And it's a new thing for most of the students as well. So it's just, it's going to be a learning, cool learning experience for all of us to kind of go on this uh, journey together and in the end have this um, 3D printer for, for, you know, 10% of the price if we were to just go out and buy one, so. And the beauty of the, I guess, the kind of 3D printer that we are building, uh, being open source, we've already attended a 3D printing meetup group just over in St. Louis, and er the information that people share is truly astounding. People are just ready to, I guess, put, I'm trying to think of words, just get the software out there, get the ability, this idea of open source, of additive manufacturing, stuff like that just out into the world and expand the technology. And that's an interesting point to bring up about open source. It really seems to be uh, a growing area of the tech industry, the sort of open collaboration and exchange of ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see open source growing, or is it starting to build up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's open source has been around for several decades, or an alternate name for that is is free software. Um, they're subtly; those terms are subtly different, but um, free software, open source software, um, was kind of you know it's the foundation of the internet and um, Linux operating system, a lot of the stuff that we use on a daily basis, although we might not know it. Most people are familiar with Windows and Mac. Um, Linux is a free open source operating system that's behind a lot of the stuff we use on a daily basis, even though we might, it's it's not on our most of our personal computers, it's on our Android phones and Roku boxes and um, all these other things. Um, and that, so that's, that's, you know, very important movement with um, software and computers. And now that idea of open source is kind of entering into the physical realm as well. So with a 3D printer, for example, open source design, you can build your own 3D printer. And then once you have that, um, you can print, you know, print objects, actual physical objects. And with open source designs, that idea of, you know, transfers from the digital world to the actual physical world where there's open source designs for, you know, you need a coat hook for your apartment. Um, you can go online, find an open source design for a coat hook and just use that design or you could tweak it so it um, meets your needs a little better or, you know, whatever you need around your house. Uh, your toilet handle breaks, you know, and you can, you know, probably find an open source design for um, a toilet handle and just print that object um, instead of having to, you know, go to the hardware store and pay $15 or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely an exciting, uh, exciting development in the world of technology, and that sort of plays into uh, that, that sort of uh, 
collective think tank seems to be what you're doing with hyperlinks. Is there any uh, plans to, uh, to distribute some open source material from the group? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're founded pretty much on the ideas of others. This, like, just the 3D printer, even though it's our first project, we are counting on uh, the knowledge of others. So, in my mind, it'd be wrong to keep any knowledge that we gain along the way to ourselves. Maybe someone else is just that one step away, that one piece of, oh, I need to do this in order to this work, and we know that. We, it, yeah. We can, yeah. We can start, you know, when, once we start making designs and um, whatever we do, if we end up designing games or apps or whatever it is, you know, I think, I think that idea of, of open source and, and sharing freely will probably be an important part of that, yeah. And among the, de uh, speaking of designs, have you, uh, what projects has Hyperlinks turned out so far that you're proud of? Sure, well, um, we, um, we kind of are in our infancy here, so we haven't really had time to, like, complete a lot of things. We are, um, we are on track for this, for this 3D printer. Um, we're going to get the parts for that and probably start putting that together next semester. Um, other than that, um, we uh, have just kind of done a few things, just like short little projects, like um, glitching JPEGs and and some just fun things like that. Um, and we're looking for um, you know more members that can kind of help us um, influence. You know where we want to go next. Uh, this three, building the three D printer will probably be a more longer term project, so you know we could probably fit in some smaller projects along the way. Um, so we've had some ideas um, along those lines. Um, we have students that are um, researching um, augmented reality, which is um, the idea of. Um, overlaying the virtual world within the physical world. So if you have, um, a, you know, like an iPad or a smartphone or something, um, and you, you're looking at the world around you through the camera, with augmented reality, you can overlay digital things within, virtual things within the, the actual physical world that you're looking at. Um, so there's a, um, a student that's kind of exploring um, exploring that um, and then once she uh, kind of makes a breakthrough of that um, it, that's a great thing about it it's like sharing knowledge so if one person can kind of look into this and figure out okay this is how this is figure out the process the workflow of how to actually make this stuff um, then you know she can share that with everyone else and so we can all start making we can have like an augmented reality sculpture garden on campus or, or a virtual tour or something like that for Lindenwood um, what else Arduino um, yep, we have some students looking into Arduino boards yep uh, our, the there are little Arduino boards um, there's also like a Raspberry Pi little Arduino boards just little basic circuit board where you learn basic programming pretty much. You can program it to do a number of things. And then yeah. I would say a little bit step beyond that, the Raspberry Pi, which operates off the Linux operating system. There is just endless possibilities of what people are doing with that. Some people have made um, just low budget, uh, security systems for their home. You can attach little motion sensors to them. You can pretty much whatever you can think, you can program it to do. So it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, they're, they're really, they're just basically tiny, really inexpensive computers. Um, a Raspberry Pi is essentially just a, a, it's a little computer. It's like the size of a like a little circuit board. Not sure which camera can see my hands there, but um, uh, it costs about thirty, thirty-five dollars, and um, you can program it. You can um, attach 
sensors to it, you know, so you, again, you can kind of, I'm, I'm really excited about any, any technology that um, combines the physical world and the digital world, because I hate looking at a screen all day. And so anything that is kind of bridging those two worlds, I think really that's kind of the future of technology, um, where it starts to actually permeate the world around us in, in physical objects and stuff. So, you know, with hooking up sensors to a, to a computer, you know, you can do something like um, have a motion sensor. And if somebody walks by, then you program the computer to do something. So, like, you know, we could put put one in the hallway in the comm center, and every time somebody walks by, it starts playing a video or something like that. Um, right. We could um, attach a temperature sensor or a light sensor. Uh, most, you know, yeah. there are all kinds of possibilities. Another kind of fun experiment that some of the members have been talking about is like the steps in our student center. Um, there's an experiment going on out there that they attached just motion sensors to each step and each step is its own note and as people walk up it plays a song right yeah wow. making going up the steps pretty interesting now instead of <laughs> taking an elevator or something right yeah and it's just Makes a it very simple idea it's just i think it's actually a, a light sensor and as you there's like a little laser and as you step on the step it breaks a laser and so it, it, you know, it's basically just a light sensor and a program that plays a sound each time that that circuit breaks. And um, so it's the components are, are pretty simple. It's just a matter of like combining those in different ways, just using your imagination to see what you can come up with. Right. And, and that's where I think, you know, gathering together is is the important part. Um, I think that's that's the most important thing about hyperlinks is just being together in the same room and bouncing ideas off of each other. Cause a bunch of components gathering in an imaginative way. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, again, bridging technology in the real world. Yeah. And how can students get involved with hyperlinks? Well, as of this semester, we've been meeting once a week on Fridays, 2 o'clock, just in the room. Is it C102? C100. C100. Um, we've been meeting for about an hour each day, but it really depends on just how into it we get. If we are in a heated discussion, we just keep going. There's no real limit. Um, yeah. Um, I think, you know, uh, we'll probably be changing times in the spring. Right now, we're Fridays at, what is it, 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock. Fridays, 2 o'clock. Um, we may have a different meeting time um, next semester and that you know we'll publish that and but yeah if, if you want to get involved just come to the meeting that's Drop really it day. and if you know if you if you um, are interested and you can't make the meeting time um, you can always just contact me or, or Kyle or, or one of the other hyperlinks members and we can kind of just include your email in the um, in the email list and keep you up to date with what we're doing. And right. Occasionally we, you know, do some other, you know, take a field trip somewhere or, or something like that outside of our regular meeting time. So students could maybe get involved that way as well. You have a uh, video game event coming up soon, right? Yes, we do. We're really excited about it. It's really our first event. And we figured what better way than during finals week, some people are getting stressed out based over their finals, studying hard, maybe you need time to relax. Uh, we're going to be setting up uh, Xbox One and a Wii just outside in the communications hallway. Just for students who are passing by, want to play some games, relax. I mean, it, it, it's going to be great. I mean, uh, student, uh, this LSGA, and I believe her name's Kelsey, said they were going to be setting up possibly some snacks around us just to. Uh, yeah. And uh, which day yeah. is that? That is going to be Wednesday, uh, December, I can't, I don't know the date, 12th maybe? Uh, middle of the week? week? Yeah, during middle yeah, of the week. During it's Wednesday finals week. of finals week. Yep. It's, I think it's the 10th. Or it might be. I don't know. It's going to be. Uh, at, any t at any rate, it's, what's the time frame? Uh, we're going for pretty much all day. Uh, we should be there set up around, probably around 9. And it's 
go until probably, well, when it, however long students are Five or, or however long people are there. Well, yeah. Well, we'll there you going. Go. Well, there you have it. Uh, if you want to get involved in hyperlinks, Fridays at 2 p.m. in uh, C100. And if you want to take a load off during finals week, all day next Wednesday, go on uh, down in the hallway here by the Communications Center and play some video games. Uh, for Lynx Talk, I'm Hans Carpenter, uh, Derek Dadian Smith, and Kyle Hawk. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Web design, cool stuff. Look, look this way. Cool stuff. Can you elaborate further on cool stuff? <laughs> it's cool. It you gave me the thumbs cool. up. I don't know. Is it cools in temperature? I mean, are we talking like 35 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, or <laughs> you mean cool more in the figurative uh, sense, the the vernacular, the parlance of our times? Holy shit. <laughs> Please don't say shit. I went way too into that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. Are we still Dude, supposed count, to be talking? Yeah, keep going. Can't, can't just count one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What did you have for breakfast eight. this morning? I didn't eat breakfast. Okay. I had almonds in my car, but I didn't eat Can you tell them. us more about eight? That sounds yeah, interesting. Good, thank you. More about eight. Yeah. <laughs> More about eight. Yeah. Well, it's a three letter word, one syllable. Huh. Ends in E, begins with A, T in the middle. That seems to be kind of innovative. You don't see a lot of words that begin with uh, EI anymore. Mm. Seems to be making a comeback somewhat in the market. Are we mm. talking about two different eights? Did I spell it wrong? No, EI. Eight? I was talking about eight, like past tense of E. Oh, I was uh, talking about eight as the in number, the, the, the number. Did I just say letter? <laughs> <laughs> the letter eight. Hail. Yeah. Why was six or eight? Seven. Because seven, eight, nine. No. <laughs> no, it's not it. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> well, there's something. I just saw uh, something. Got it. First and third, seven. I want you to go out to the window. I want you to open it up, and I want you to say, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. It's meltdown. Net network. <laughs> I, I saw it. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't remember. what Was that in your class? No. No. When did you see that? I, it was one class I saw it in. I'm ready as well. Are we ready? <clears throat> I'm ready if you guys are ready. Do it. Okay, whenever you're ready, Hans. Okay. <laughs> okay. I only lost my train of thought like three times. That's okay. We good? No, that was perfect. Sweet. I looked in the wrong camera at first. Oh, that's all right. Hey. Oh. Hey, job, everybody. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah. Thanks for hosting. Thanks. No problem. It was fun. Look at this. Uh, yeah. Nice, oh, nice questions. Yeah, we could have gone on all day with open source. There's so much. Yeah. Stuff.